What's up, y'all? So I wanted to hop on here real quick and discuss Adidas dropping Kanye West. We spoke about this a little bit briefly the other day. Will they be the last one to drop the hammer on Kanye? And it looks like they have finally decided to go that route. They are the last big business partner, I believe, that Kanye West has that has dropped him. We're talking Adidas. We're talking Gap. We're talking Balenciaga. So I wonder what this is going to look like for Kanye moving forward. But I do want to read their statement, then I wanted to really delve into it. A little bit. So Adidas on Tuesday in his partnership with Ye, formerly known as Kanye West, after the musician made a series of offensive and anti-Semitic comments, Adidas said in a statement, Adidas does not tolerate anti-Semitism and other sort of hate speech. Ye's recent comments and actions have been unacceptable, hateful, and dangerous, and they violate the company's values of diversity and inclusion, mutual respect, and fairness. After a thorough review, the company has taken the decision to terminate the partnership with Ye immediately in production of Yeezy branded products and stop all payments to Ye and his companies, Adidas will stop the Adidas Yeezy business with immediate effect. It said this would have a short-term negative impact of up to 250 million euros, which is $246 million uh, on net income in 2020 due to high seasonality in the fourth quarter. It added that it was the sole owner of all designs, rights to existing products, as well as previous and new colorways under the partnership, and brought information during third quarter quarters. No, this is my thing. If you don't want to, not get it, business, you're going to do what you got to do business. You ain't going to fucking stop selling Yeezys. But my thing is, like, if you want to cut them off, cut up everything off. Don't use the man's likeness. Don't use the man's previous designs. Don't use the new colorways. Don't do all that. No, no, no. If you want to get rid of Ye and because of his comments, get rid of everything. Don't just try to, oh, the 350s are back out. Oh, come get the new 750s. Don't continue to keep trying to release it. That's like you cut Jordan for saying this shit. It's like, oh, we're still going to sell Jordans. Nah, be keep, nah, cut all that shit. Don't just cut the bullshit y'all ain't selling. Don't just cut the, don't cut the, the jackets motherfuckers ain't wearing. Don't just cut all that shit. Cut the shoes. If, if, if Adidas really want to make a stance, they'll cut the shoes. But you know what they're not going to do? They're not going to cut the shoes. All the 350s they got, all the 750s, all the 850s, the 950s, the boots, whatever the hell numbers they got, they're going to keep those. The German sportswear giant have faced pressure from the public and his own employees to cut ties with Ye, who said on a podcast on October 16th, I can say anti-Semitic things and Adidas can't drop me. Now what? Calling Adidas had also come from at least three legal organizations as well as anti-racist groups, a change.org petition, Set about a campaign against anti-Semitism, urging Adidas to sever ties with Ye, gathered 169,000 signatures by Tuesday morning. So, that's my thing. That's my thing about it. I don't like you, like, because you're only feeding into Kanye's narrative when you do so like this, right? Because a lot of people who aren't really privy to it, they're not really caring too much about it. When they see, oh shit, he said X, they took away. Y, Z, come back to A, B, C. They took away everything for this man. We're talking about bank accounts. We're talking about billion-dollar deals. They took away everything. Except for his music catalog, which I don't know if he owns or not, but, I mean, he got dropped by Def Jam, or maybe, you know, there's reports that he just didn't sign back with Def Jam, but it was just convenient that that came out now. You make people think who ain't really been thinking about it, oh, shit, maybe he is right about the power of these people. Like I said, people having power is... Irrelevant because we know they have power, especially within entertainment. Like I don't, I, I just hate that that can't be said. I just, I, it's just so stupid. Now, when you get to all that, they're evil and they're trying to scheme me at every cricket corner. Now that's different. You putting things on all people saying all these type of people are evil. Like I read yesterday with the white supremacists saying they're devils. I don't agree with that. But we're not going to act like powerful people in the entertainment in, in, in industry are not people that are Jewish. Like I saw the other day, I was reading the CEO of Warner Records is what's his name like Bay Shook or something like that. He's a Jewish guy that started up a black and Jewish coalition through entertainment. And he signed on with the, well, I think she's like the CEO of Motown. I don't know her name. It's a, it's a beautiful African name. I mean, it may not even be African, but it looks like it. But, you know, he does that. Like, so to say that isn't a, a lie. So now that he's dropped from everything, or at least his big major deals, it just looks a little weird. So all three of these groups, the Anti-Defamation League, which is a, an organization made up um, in defense of Jewish people, Antisemitism.com, an international legal forum, applauded the move by Adidas on Tuesday. In the end, Adidas' actions sent a powerful message that anti-Semitism and bigotry have no place in society. Talent agency CAA also confirmed to drop Yeh as a client Monday, and he was let go by Balenciaga. So also, before, after the show I did yesterday, his the biggest pretty much talent agency in Hollywood dropped him. So, that just makes me go to response to like, you know, I, I've had these similar responses. So I'm not saying like, um, I'm going to read these off to you, but like I'm, maybe people listen to what other people say. So Scotty Beam, she has some tweets and she has some reactions to it that were similar to how I feel. 
So she said, "This is uh, this is that's tweet from last night." So she said, "Which being anti-black held this much weight?" Right. Right after this nigga said slavery was a choice, they were harmonizing to his church nigger spirituals directly after. And then the guys from It's the Real told her they literally started flying out um, to Wyoming. And then she said, no, nah, where was that? Somebody said something about, she said something about CAA earlier, but I, I can't, she must have deleted it or it got deleted or whatever. But anyways, that's all, that's all I say. It's like, and I'm not, like I said, I'm not too offended by the slavery's of choice thing, right? I know a lot of people are offended by it. But when you think about these two conversations, when you think about these two tragedies, he's not even bringing up the Holocaust. He's just saying things that Hitler said that brought on the Holocaust. But when Kanye is saying it, you got to know in context, he's not saying it in the same way that Hitler's trying to use it. You just got, you to, to be to be honest, you just know that's not the route this guy's taking. You just, he's, he has a personal vendetta against people in the entertainment industry that so happen to fuck him over, that so happen to be Jewish. And that's, and he's saying it in a way that, you know what I'm saying, people are offended by because he's just labeling everybody and nobody likes labeling and generalizing an entire set of people. I get that. But you know he's not the next Hitler. He's not going to start up a thing. I know people put, well, what about those? They, they don't. They hated Jews before Kanye anyways. They didn't like Jews before. It kind of gives anything about Jewish people. They're like, yes, you're correct. They are evil. You saw with the Nick Fuentes when he's like Antoine too. There's something about Jewish people. He's like, well, that is true. They are. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're just going to do anything. They don't like Jewish people. But my thing was like, in the clip I put out today from my show yesterday, I was like, so, you know, hey, when he said slavery was a choice, CAA ain't dropped shit. Adidas was cool still putting out Yeezys. They were still cool putting out this. He said slavery was a choice. Gap wasn't even, I mean, that happened. Gap just signed in the last couple of years, but that didn't deter them from signing him. So why that, not this? Now you say, oh, you know, black people don't have the power. That's what they have the fucking power. That's what it is. Jews people have power. That's it. They have power. They have influence. They're able to cut you off when they want to because they have power. To say somebody has power doesn't mean they have power. They want to take over the world. They want to kill you. They want to depopulate. I'm not saying all that shit. I'm just saying they have power. They have people in high, powerful places that can make decisions. Point my period. That's just what it is. That's not anti-Semitic. That's not hateful. That's just what it is. And it shows, like I said, all you're doing is showing people, regular people, like, oh, shit, this is what he was talking about. Because people are pointing to, oh, when he say black shit, nothing happened. He say this shit, wipe away everything. If Kanye West was saying no, my Jewish people did the White Lives Matter shit, which made a lot of black people upset, they wouldn't have dropped them. They wouldn't, they wouldn't have done nothing. But with Jewish people, anytime you say like powerful in this, it just brings back, you know, reminiscence of 1930s. Lex Friedman said that on his podcast yesterday. We was talking to Kanye West about it. You know, he said, you give me real 1930s something vibes by saying Jewish media and saying this and saying that. Which, like I said, I can understand it could be a trigger to Jewish people because it is, I guess, reminiscent of what happened. But you still have to know Kanye West is not the next coming of Hitler and going to create a society of people that will want to put Jewish people back in internment camps through his rhetoric. So it's just, you know, it's always, it's just weird to me. I would just look at it for what it is. I just see the things that are going on. I see the things that are being discussed. And even they bullied the Kardashians and saying something. I talk about Boy George calling out Kim, like, why aren't y'all saying anything? And in unison, perfect PR, they all started dropping Jewish shit. Chloe Kardashian shared something. I stand with the Jewish people that was tweeted by Amy Schumer, or posted by Amy Schumer. She reposted on her story. Kylie Jenner reposted the same thing on her story. Kim Kardashian had a whole message. Like, let me see. Let me see what Kim said. Let me pull that up. She said she tweeted and she posted on her social media. Hate, I mean, on her Instagram. Hate speech is never okay or excusable. I stand together with the Jewish community and call on the terrible violence and hateful rhetoric towards them to come to an immediate end. Oh, thank you. Kim Kardashian and the Kardashians solved uh, anti-Semitic hatred against Jewish people with their tweets and their contribution to society. It's all bullshit. It's all PR. It's all, we don't want to look this. I don't, I don't hold them plausible for anything Kanye West says. I don't care if they were married. I don't care if they had 10 kids. I don't care. They are not responsible for what Kanye West says or does. They don't have to speak out against Kanye West. They just don't have to do it. So that tweet got 15,000 retweets, 196,000 likes. Um, you know, she, she, she could pat herself on the back. The Kardashians could like, 
praise themselves for doing what they got to do. So it's just a, it's just a shit show, man. It's just a shit show, a shit show for Kanye West. Now, some people are speculating that Kanye West did this on purpose, right? He did these things on purpose because before the you know White Lives Matter, before the um the the comments about Jewish people, he was already fighting with Gap. He was already fighting with Adidas. Some people were trying to speculate he was trying to get out of these deals. And this is just the way he saw fit to get out of these deals. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see Kanye go ghost for, you know, a couple of months. Like, hey, I got what I needed. I'm going to start building my own factories. And I'm going to try to figure out how to reset my own shit. Because people, at the end of the day, people are still going to buy Yeezys from Kanye if Kanye is able to figure out a way to release them himself. Because Kanye is Kanye. Why the fuck that water start dripping like that? But anyways. Oh, they also shelved the documentary. He had a documentary, I guess, coming out. So, yeah, according to Forbes, see? Forbes article just popped up. Billionaire no more. Kanye's anti-Semitic uh, obliterates his net worth as Adidas cut ties. Just days ago, the rapper, uh, come fashion entrepreneur, Kanye West challenged Adidas to drop him following a week-long barrage of anti-Semitic remarks made on social media in a national media appearance. I can say anti-Semitic shit because Adidas can't drop me. Uh, who legally goes by the name Ye? And they're talking about drink champs. Adidas gets an estimated 4 to 8% of its sales from Yeezy products. According to investment bank Cohen, for Ye, it was an even bigger deal, accounting for $1.5 billion worth of his net worth. Like I said, Adidas, uh, a gap was at some point like 4.4, and Adidas' deal was 1.5. So he was a billionaire not off because he had so much cash because these deals were worth so much. Now that he doesn't have these deals, he's no longer a billionaire. So let me see where they talk about it. So the 1.5 value of the Adidas deal was calculated off of multiple of annual earnings based on interviews with industry experts. Forbes have viewed the royalties they received from Adidas to be similar to royalties from music catalogs or film residuals. The Adidas income stream could be sold off, those experts said. Just like dozens of musicians, including the likes of Bob Dylan and Bruce Springsteen, have sold their life's works over the past two years. Without, uh, without Adidas, Kanye is only worth $400 million. The remainder of Ye's fortune, Forbes estimates, come uh, from real estate, cash, his music catalog, and 5% stake in Skims, which is Kim Kardashian's clothing company. Removing Ye from the billionaires list caps off a years-long saga between the rapper and Forbes. Ye always felt his net worth was undervalued. When he first made the list in 2020 with an estimated billion-dollar fortune, Ye wasn't happy. It's not a billion he takes us at a time. It's 3.3, since no one at Forbes knows how to count. The cat pattern continued over the years when Ye continued to complain about our low numbers. For this year's valuation, Ye sent documents claiming his Adidas partnership alone was worth 4.3. When Ye learned he would uh, clock in at $2 billion overall, his unhappiness was before leaked to the tabloids. Losing Adidas was the final nail in his net worth coffin. Gap turned in his deal with uh, him in September. Earlier this month, J.B. Morgan reportedly unbanked Ye. French fashion house Balenciaga mixed their relationship with Ye in October, just weeks after he walked uh, their runway at a pair of fashion week. And also, see, Balenciaga as well, they, they, they was cool like the the... the, the the White Lives Matter shit. They was going to put that shit out until the anti-Semitic shit came out. So it's like, it's like, it's, they're just full of shit. They're just full of, everybody's, they're all just full of shit. Just full of shit, man. So, Kanye, I mean, there's still got to be some self-accountability. You got to know how to speak. You got to kind of know what you're doing. Like, I would never go into those depths and all that type of shit because I know where those depths will get you. If you're really trying to convey a message and actually get something changed and get a process going, you got to know how to convey your message. So at the end of the day, he still is, you know, accountable for the things that he says but when you look at the reaction by all these companies and the things you think about everything Ye has done throughout his entire career and the reaction to those things and the reaction to this are completely different it always makes you wonder and always just makes you think it doesn't make you think we know who's powerful like uh, you know who's powerful and I say this all the time I, I, I always fucking say this I'm like or you can say somebody's powerful without saying like they're trying to fucking take over the world and kill everybody or they would have bad intentions for you. Like I, said, I can say China is powerful. Chinese people are powerful. I can say that. Right? I can say Saudi Arabian people are powerful. They control the oil. They 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 wanna they wanna I can say Saudi Arabia wants to uh destroy America by raising oil prices and, and causing turmoil within I can say I can say all that shit. Nobody will, they won't even fucking blink an eye. But you know, whatever. Uh, kind of got dropped. We'll talk about it a little bit later tonight. Episode of your podcast. Make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Uh, the downfall of Kanye is still going on from billionaire to 100 millionaire. He's still doing good. 
But let me know what y'all think in the comments down below. See y'all tonight, man. It's your boy D-Friend. Peace.